FO, make your point. Go ahead, please. Trump's uh, experts believe <clears throat> that uh, Trump's position on uh, ISIS, I mean, and Muslims helps to recruit for ISIS because that bombast that creates a war-like mentality is what they want. So I guess they owe a twenty-eight thousand dollar check to both him and you. What's the twenty-eight thousand dollar check? Oh, to help create discord, to help create problems, to help make it. Well, more wait, 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 sir. Better. You know, you're not you're not smart enough for sarcasm. It requires a minimal intelligence for that. First of all, what you said, you said experts. Which experts? Oh, look it up, M Mikey. Back. Nuts. No, you look it up. You're making the point. You're alleging that Trump's position makes Muslims join ISIS, and you say experts are saying that. Which experts? Take 10 seconds to look it up on Google. You're, you're, you're... No, no, you're, you're the genius. You're calling a radio show. You're getting your 15 seconds of fame. So you don't know who the experts are. What are they, some drug addicts at Harvard? That's number one. But, you know, hey, I don't even care if Trump's rhetoric causes Muslims to join ISIS. Let me tell you why. Because they're all going to be in one place, very convenient for the Russian nuclear weapons that will be used. How's that? Does that work for you? <laughs> That's what, what, what's, the, what's the laughter for? What's the laughter for? What do you think? This is a joke? You, yeah. What do you think? You're immune You're immune to these animals? You think they're going to like you because you're a life, a card-carrying progressive? You're, in, you're entertaining as usual, and that's why I listen to you. All right, take a walk. Go back to the cafe and go cash your SDSI check. Go back to one of the cafes in the Mission District and go cash your SDSI crazy check. We know you don't work for a living. I had you on because I needed a jester. I needed a clown to beat up. I uh, got the clown, the jester, on the show just for a few seconds. Don't you love it? They call the show, tell me I'm amusing to them. Now, what are they wasting their time for? No, it's not because I'm amusing. It's because they know I'm right. It's the only reason these drug-addicted progressives listen to this show is because there's a scintilla of reason left in their drug-addled brains. And they seem to remember something to do with survival. Somewhere deep down in the gray matter, they remember that there's something about survival somewhere in their brain, somewhere implanted into their neurons. Daddy taught them how to survive, and they hear Daddy's voice. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. That was from last week's Muslim massacre in San Bernardino. Sorry, I have to say Muslim and massacre in the same sentence. I don't think it's illegal yet. I haven't yet con consulted with Loretta Lynch's uh, protocols as to what can be said in the new uh, Muslim-dominated America. But it's getting very alarming when you realize that the entire administration is on the wrong side of this issue. The entire country is rallying around Donald Trump for one reason. They're paranoid. They're afraid. And they're paranoid for good reason. You know, sometimes fear is based upon reality. If one terrorist event after another is occurring from the Muslim communities around the world, I mean, it's pretty clear why people don't trust Muslims. Let's just take the lid off the subject. What is Trump operating in a vacuum and everyone who follows him is an idiot and a racist and a bigot? It's impossible to believe that. The whole world knows there's a problem here. I know it. I've studied history. 1,400-year history of terror. There were several hundred years in between where there was very little terror. And then the Wahhabi sect appeared out of Saudi Arabia. And now we are facing terror all over again. And they will lose again. As sure as I'm sitting here, they will lose again because they've now antagonized the entire world. They've antagonized the whole world. Obama did nothing for several years because either he's sympathetic or he's incompetent. One or the other, it doesn't matter which. Fake airplane runs, uh, planes coming back without dropping bombs, 
targets called in that he won't hit. Which side has he been on? Well, don't dare ask that question. They dare not call it a conspiracy. They dare not question the loyalty of the thin smoker from Honolulu. He's above the law. He's above questions. They watch Homeland for years, and they cheer at all the liberals. What a great piece of art that is. For years, they cheer the show Homeland. And then when Homeland appears right in front of their eyes, they deny its reality. They can't connect it. Life imitates art. Art imitates light. Light. Life. We heard about it for years in the universities, but when it actually occurs, they can't. They can't make the connections. Their synapses have a missing link. There's a missing enzyme in the mind of the ultra liberal. But let's get down to brass tacks. Trump is rising for one reason. People are afraid of Muslims. They do fear them. They don't know whether any one of them is going to go off at any minute next with a sword or a gun. I mean, that's the reality. People are afraid right now. You forgot last week already. It's been buried by Zuckerberg. It's been varied by Spielberg, Heelberg, Mielberg, Drillberg, Dealberg, Dillerberg. When have you last seen a film? When have you last seen a film showing the enemy, the actual enemy? I remember Souls, a Lone Survivor was one, but he tempered that with the good Muslims who saved them, which is true. Anyone who's been over there knows that it were not for the Muslims who were anti-terror, there would be no American presence possible at all. That's the reality. But when have you last seen a movie of the type that was done during World War II that was used for propaganda to alert the population to the dangers of Nazism, where every German was painted in a sinister manner? Where has been a movie like that? Well, don't expect it from the Hollywood brats. Don't expect it from Spielberg, who has just been given another award by Mr. Hussein Obama. Don't expect it from George Lucas. George Lucas, who was given another... Medal of Freedom. Why do you think Obama gives all these awards to movie makers? What do you think, Obama's stupid? You think he got where he is and stays where he is because he's dumb? Don't make that mistake. People are afraid of Muslims. They distrust them. I'm just telling you like it is. I know you don't want to hear it. It's almost uh, like nerve-wracking to listen to this. I told you I wanted to do a Muslim-free day and a Trump-free day. But I can't. It's almost impossible. I wake up and I see that the liberals who pushed to close Gitmo and get everyone out of Guantanamo Bay because it was so illegal and it was so illegal to arrest them and hold them for so long against their will. Well, one was released against the wishes of the federal prosecutor, the military prosecutor. He went to Yemen. He's now a general on the ground, directing the killing of people, the stoning of women, the raping of young girls. Terror prophecy fulfilled because of liberalism. So the problem is now what needs to be done. WABC Vito, tell us your story from New York City. Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, pleasure to speak to you. I agree with you. Obama is a sympathizer. But here in New York, I do a lot of business with Muslims, uh, with delis and bodegas. Prior to Trump, they were validating everything that's going on in the world. Explain to me why it should be going on. Now Trump struck a nerve, and they're all shaking in their boots. There's something going wait, wait, wait. on. What, what do you mean? Before Trump, they were sympathetic to the to the terror around the world, or ignored it? They were they were explaining to me why they were validating it. Oh, they were saying it was Israel U.S. policy, the standard liberal line. Is that it? They don't even know their own history of terror going back fourteen hundred years. Most, uh, not most. All these guys are from Yemen, and they gone for six months at a time and come back with more people, and the welfare from the stores goes back to Yemen. It's amazing. Oh boy. Oh, boy. And now what? They're afraid they're going to be uh, uh, looked into? Is that it? I believe so. And oh, I, the, I, the, I, they, they, they suddenly dummied up. They're acting like good Americans all of a sudden. Have any of them put American flags in their grocery stores yet? Pretty much. That's what's going on. Yeah, I think it's so, yeah. Next, they'll be uh, singing the Star Spangled Banner in Arabic. <laughs> but my worst fear is I think it's going to come true. I believe we got the uh, jihadis amongst us in New York in these stores. I really believe well, you could let me tell you Vito do you see it in their eyes the hate absolutely absolutely Vito you sound like a streetwise New Yorker who's been around a long time and you can read a man's read a man I mean I would think you're working in these delis they're in marginal neighborhoods you, you see the eyes don't you yes yes you could oh. you could tell which ones are which that's what I'm saying well, 
It's a shame that you're not running the Department of Homeland Security, Vito. I'm sending you a Christmas gift, Government Zero, because unfortunately it defines Barry's government. All right, can we go on and do something other than Muslims and, and Trump and terror? Is there any other topic in the world? Can I play Gene, Gene Autry, Jingle Bells? No, I can't. The whole Christmas season has been stolen. The whole Christmas season has been stolen by the Muslim marauding of last week. The country is at its wit's end. And nice people are saying don't criminalize an entire race of religion. They happen to be 100% right. So let me ask the nice people, what would you do if you were in charge? Let me ask the nice people out there who say, don't criminalize an entire religion or entire race. Okay, we agree with you. Tell me what you would do to sort out the wheat from the chaff. That's all. We're open to ideas. This is not Turkey. This is the United States of America. What would you do? R while you're calling the show, Robert, play one more of the dispatch calls. Let's see if we can hear them saying it's three or two uh, shooters last week. Go ahead. We're going to set up a triage area. I need some medical aid in here immediately. Um, a near assessment's about 15 or 20 down. Travis, come on, I'd like to have access cards. I'm at the main entrance. Where do you want me? Whoever has access cards to stage one is one of the fish. Sorry, you were covered when you wanted the announcements over the intercom. I do have access to that now. What would you like said? Whoever's left in the building hiding, have them come to you so you can evacuate them. Uh, be cautious. There's other teams in there. And uh, be cautious of who's coming to you. Make sure be cautious of who's coming to you. Make sure Hussein Obama should not have George Lucas at the Lincoln Center, the Kennedy Center, uh, giving him a Medal of Freedom. It should have been the first responders in San Bernardino, but we know where this hate-filled president leans. He should have had one of these heroes from San Bernardino. Did you see the faces of these men who went in there? You see the guts on their faces? They're the only link we have between our safety and our future. But I'm asking you, folks, I'm asking especially those who say don't vilify an entire race or religion, what you would do to separate the wheat from the chaff, the good from the bad. How would you go about it? Because that's the whole narrative. That's all we're talking about right now. Moreover, what sense does it make to bring in more Muslims right now Tell me what sense that makes when you know that the government failed us in vetting these two from uh, San Bernardino. How are they going to vet 100,000 more? Which ones were radicalized before they got here or are likely to be so-called radicalized once they're here, even though that's a misnomer? I don't like the word radicalized because that's a misnomer to begin with. And I'll tell you why a little later on. Dave on WDRC Radio, go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Savage, first of all, thank you for your honesty. Uh, you are a true American in my book, and I think uh, if, hopefully, Donald Trump is elected president of the United States, and I hope he makes you secretary of state. Between <laughs> no, you I, that, that's not my cup of tea. I'm not a diplomatic type. <laughs> if Donald Trump is elected and he ever comes back on my show before then, I will a lobby for only one position. I want to run health and human services. I want to have oversight over the HHS machine that robs most of the money out of the United States government, out of the taxpayers' pockets. I want to take control of health and human services. I want to rein in the welfare state. I want to get all the gangsters in the Medicaid racket. I want to close down the uh, science racket, the medical rackets, and I want to make sure science and medicine are operational again in America. Really, honest to God, I'd leave, I would leave my media career for that, and I would ask for one dollar a year to do so. All right, Dave, Christmas gift to you. Everybody gets one who gets on Government Zero. I'm giving them out like uh, hotcakes. Mohammed on WFTL, Florida. Go ahead, please. You're next up on the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, thank you for the airtime. Uh, I'm Muslim American. We, a couple of days ago, you said you don't hear any outcry from the community. I go to the mosque. We condemn this action. We are one percent of the U.S. population. We have 5,000 people in the U.S. Armed Forces. That's just in the U.S. Armed Forces. Never mind the paramedics, the fire department, and the police. We are the Mohammed Al Karim, who was the uh, paramedic who died in 9/11, saving saving lives when the buildings collapsed on him. 
ما امریکن مارزم هم 